Hello, Ruth. Hello. Hi, Natalie. Nice to see you. Yes, I'm so happy to be doing this with you. We're doing a special success story interview. And I think that with you, half an hour is not enough to talk about all the success that you've achieved. So we're going to have to talk really fast or we're going to have to say very uh, a lot of things in this half an hour because your journey is incredible, uh, so inspiring. I know I quote you a lot and I speak about you as an example of success a lot to anyone who wants to hear, uh, you know, how to uh, leverage and, and successfully scale their business. But I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it in the interview. So thank you so much for being here with us today, Ruth. My great pleasure. Amazing. So if you don't know who is Ruth Perednik, uh, I will read her bio right now because we I really want you to understand everything that she has done. And the bio is, is very clear uh, about uh, the, you know, the impact that Ruth is having at, in, in her uh, in her industry. So uh, Ruth Perednik is a senior psychologist and the founder of the Selective Mutism Treatment Center in Jerusalem. Her passion for selective mutism started over three decades ago when her trilingual son suffered from, his, from this then unknown condition, which was selective mutism. Since then, she has treated thousands of children and teens suffering from selective mutism, has published a book that has been translated in many languages, and has been invited to give a TED Talk to share her innovative treatment approach. This treatment is based on a cognitive behavioral approach, which focuses on improved social communication, usually resulting in an excellent response within several months. In this integrative approach, the significant adults in the child's world, such as the teachers, the parents, and the therapists, are all considered therapeutic agents for change, and whenever possible, carry out their own complementary interventions, leveraging momentum for change and healing. The Selective Mutism Treatment Center also provides extensive in-person and online training programs for parents and mental health professionals, as well as lectures on selective mutism in English, Spanish, and Hebrew all over the world. Yeah, I'm going to add to that that uh, one day a week I work in China. We're opening the first Selective Mutism Treatment Center. We have a WeChat, which is like WhatsApp group of 900 people and growing and a waiting list and in, and working on a documentary there following one of my clients throughout the year seeing how with this long distance treatment uh the child overcomes selective mutism so the world wow. is so is so close it's so small you know you can, you can wow just, uh, global global china uh, the whole world, it's like, it's like amazing. So before we dive in your, uh, your business journey, I do want to speak about how it happened in the beginning when your son uh, was, uh, you did, you said that at, at the time, this condition was unknown. Uh, you, you have a son who is trilingual, who's, you know, who doesn't speak. And can you take us back to that place before we dive into business? Because everything started uh, from uh, from your born to do, right? From this passion that you had. So, so how did it happen? How did it all start? I was a young, recently uh, qualified psychologist, and um, and my son suffered from selective mutism. It was not known then. Though I found actually my mum in England found a tiny article. In the Financial Times Education Supplement, that's the you know, I, I that's not a widely read um, uh, section of the newspaper on the whole, and um, and I understood this was what he was suffering from. Nobody could offer appropriate treatment, so I dove in, and intuitively and using my training, uh, treated him myself, and then uh, word of mouth, people contacted me. The Jerusalem municipality where I worked pushed me to to head a center there, which I did. Um, and out of this terribly difficult situation of a new immigrant with a child 
suffering from quite a you know a, a difficult disorder I I got my passion and my life's work and it's unbelievable when I look back at that journey if I would have thought of that moment that anything good could have come of that <laughs> It it just uh, I have to tell a little vignette which I only heard yesterday that um, his wife is studying br very brilliant woman he has five kids now and his wife is uh, doing her thesis on selective mutism. Oh wow! <laughs> Full several, several times over. Wow! So, wow! Um, wow! That is amazing. So yeah. basically, selective mutism for the people that are listening are kids and even teens that are not talking. Right? They're just they're like usually in specific places. That's usually outside the home. Usually inside the home, they can talk. Even though the trouble with anxiety disorders is, if they're not treated, they can spread. So I have a few current cases where children have stopped talking altogether. That that's very rare. It can happen, but the usual Clinical picture is a child who doesn't talk um, outside the home, but inside the home can talk normally. Okay. And so can you share with us, you know, in, in, I don't want, I want to say in one sentence, but what is, the, what is your approach? Because we say it's innovative, it's new. Uh, so what is the approach? What, what is the Ruth for Rednick special <laughs> uh, recipe, magical recipe for, you know, to make kids talk? It is starting off, it's very unorthodox, but it's gaining popularity and it works. It's starting off in the child's home. The therapy actually takes place in the child's home. That's his comfort zone. And we're from, a, a, um, my therapists from a kind of very modest place are joining the family. They're not inviting the family to their clinic. You know, I'm the great um psychologists and going into the house respecting the families respecting the child joining the child there building a relationship with the child and then moving over to the therapy in school or in kindergarten in the child's real life i i so believe in that that is my mantra to help the child in in his or her real life Wow. And so this is how you see results. It's by going into the homes, by going into their comfort zone, and then children start to speak more at home, and then they start to speak more also at school. This is what's happening. You're the therapist who then helps the child leverage that to talk to other people in, in their surroundings, adding a teacher, adding another friend, at the same time working with the teachers, building an, a therapeutic intervention for teachers, and a therapeutic intervention for parents. So these wow. three sides of the triangle are each working, the therapist, the parent, and the teacher. And when all three work, that is a powerful momentum for change. Wow, wow, it sounds amazing. I mean, it sounds like all psychological problems should be solved like that when you think about it. Children, I absolutely agree, because we're not, we're not um, separated from our society. We're part of our surroundings. Our, day by day, minute by minute, um, social interactions are what counts. Right. Wow, amazing. And and I, I mean, and I also understood just a few minutes ago before we went live, I mean, I know you for many years and I thought I knew a lot about you, but there's one thing that I still didn't know and I was like, yeah, we have to talk about that, is that you've been a stay-at-home mom until the age of 40 years old. So can you tell us more about that? Meaning like you haven't yeah. worked, you didn't finish your studies like how did how did that happen i basically lived in england israel argentina and that kind of stalled my studies a bit but also i was very focused on my kids while they were at home until they started school and uh, i was a stay a proud happy stay-at-home mom and if you would have asked me whether I would build some a, a treatment center, I would have said never in a million years. That's not me. <laughs> it's amazing how you can develop. Um, and so at the age of 40, I qualified. At the same time, we moved to Israel. My son had this difficulty. So I was thrown into the frying pan, you know, trying to help him. And that definitely, it, it, it caused this passion to flow through my veins because it's you know it was my flesh and bra and blood For and sure. I identified with any potential clients because I was there of course um, so that was yeah the first 20 years of my working life I was at home and I started oh, wow. at 40 <laughs> 
think that's amazing. And I think it's so inspiring for anyone who is starting later or even having a change of career or starting a business after another career. I think it's it gives hope. Right? It's very inspiring that, yes, you can start at the age of 40 and get to where we're going to talk about where you are today. We had a little glimpse, you know, by reading your bio, but it, it really doesn't have to be that you spend your whole life. Uh, building that business, you can also start later and and reach uh, success. So I think that's really important for everyone who listens uh, to be inspired by that. So so yeah. that's great. so you start by you know discovering this me- you know c- creating this method, writing a book. Right, you have your book where your method is described. You worked at the municipality. You start you know receiving people one on one. There's a big demand. A lot of people come and uh, you you basically don't know where to put them, right? It's like your your agenda is full. You don't have room. People, you know, call you at 10 o'clock at night, wake you up in the middle of the night. Like, you know, you're you're always uh, you're overwhelmed with uh, with demand. And what happens then? Because you're you have your practice in the municipality, but you see that there is so much demand that you have to do something about it. So so what happens then? So my my son actually told me, a different son, <laughs> told me, I have all these in-house advisors, um, <laughs> told me either you add another eight hours to your day or you hire people or you get people to work for you. And I, I'm a therapist. I'm, I knew nothing about business. And, um, but I realized that either I have to just keep seeing my X number of one-on-one clients, which is frustrating because there are so many people out there and there, I have this method that works, um, or I have to, uh, have some kind of business structure. And that's when I came to you. And I do tell everybody that I would not have been able to do it without you because I, I understood I had to structure it so I would have people working for me and but but how do you do that you know it, it's not something that you know naturally um, necessarily at least I didn't so um, but I, I did believe that was my only way to to move forward either I had to plateau and just stay where I was which was an option but I I so identify with parents and kids, suffering from this uh disorder and i and i have a way that so many people can overcome it and i just had this thirst i was so surprised at myself that i had this thirst to get it out in the world and um and help other people um so then i came to you and we built together a treatment tracks and ways of leveraging and ways of hiring therapists who would be working for me and in, in all different places in Israel um, and also around the world. And, and that was just, you know, enabled me to, instead of seeing, you know, X number of people per month, multiplying that by 15 or by 20, which is incredible. Incredible, incredible. <laughs> I remember when you first came to me and you still had your practice at the at the municipality and you had your private practice and you know and you had all those people calling you all the time. You had you didn't have any personal life, of course, no boundaries. I remember at the time, right? Uh, and it was crazy yeah, to think. <laughs> <now. laughs> <laughs> okay, we have, we'll have to talk yeah. about that. Right? <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, I. I in one on one way, I also understand why the boundaries are still not there. It's because your heart is so big and you want to help so many people and you want to be there for so many people. And I know I've told you so many times, like, you know, you need to make sure that your private life is, you know, is balanced and that you have your work life balance. And, and, and of course, but when you're, you know, working with kids and with families that are suffering, it's easier said than done. So, I, I mean, I, I understand that, of course, you know, there's always things we need to work on, but it's also very difficult to uh, to put boundaries. So when you're working with people that are, that are suffering and, and you want to help. And so we started by building those tracks, like you said, which was the beginning of go, moving away from I'm doing, you know, one on one uh consultation and uh, you are the only person who can deliver this method right the tracks were enabling you to say okay i can teach that 
to someone else and they can do it, which is the definition of scaling, right? I mean, at the time we didn't know it, but it is the definition of scaling because if not, then everything has to go through you. And then you started not only providing this service to families, but also training therapists. And that developed a whole different business model or another revenue stream is because I think that I don't have the exact numbers, but I think you've trained hundreds of therapists, right? That that came through your method and paid to actually be trained by you. So how did that happen? So um, it happened by demand. Firstly, that was another way of scaling, you know, I wrote the book and that was fantastic because, and that I actually did it when I was working at Hebrew U for a while um, and supervising uh, students, psychology students there and not having to re-explain one-on-one or even one group at a time, but you have this book. And then the next natural stage was, and this was long before Corona, was to do Zoom um, therapist courses uh, I currently have one in going on in Hebrew. I'm on the ninth out of ten sessions coming up, and uh, and after I finish the one in Hebrew, I'll begin one in English, and that just means there are constantly new groups of trained therapists who then can either work for me under you know within the within the center, or they can take off on their own. And you said something which I repeat so often, um, which is when you have knowledge you spread it, you let it free like a bird. And then if people want to come to me and continue working with me, that's fantastic. And I do feel they'll get all of that experience and all of that um, knowledge that I've had over the past, built over the past um, 20 plus years, but not, not to limit myself with like being scared of who am I going to include in this circle, but just to spread the word that in its own right is truly satisfying when there are therapists working in all kinds of places that I, I don't know who they are, but they've passed through my my course at some stage. Yeah, um, and, and yeah, that, that is definitely a lesson that we learn, right? Because when we scale, we at the same time, we want to go big, but at the same time, we're also afraid of competition, right? What if someone takes my method and goes and builds another center, right? And I know we've spoken about that, but with all my clients, it's a question. So someone else is going to take my method, right? But it's really the shift of mindset that we go through because there's only one Ruth and there's only one person who started this, you know, 20 years ago. And anyone who's coming now is still a student of Ruth. And so even if they start their own center, they still have this whole gap that they have to fill until they reach, you know, wherever you are. And you'll be in another, you know, place when they when they reach. So it's only win, win, win. It's like everyone, everyone gets to win. The parents, the children, the therapist, and you, and, and, and everything, everything works. And it is a feeling of, you know, this abundance that has landed on me. And I, I, I kind of feel it's landed on me. I mean, I know I've worked very, very hard for it. But I, I, I'm still so in wonder of what has happened um, and just passing it on, passing it on through the people who come to the center, through people who don't come to the center, through my book, through my courses. I also have um, many online courses that you can purchase, which are not live, uh, in several languages, in Chinese, in English, in Hebrew, one coming out in Spanish soon. Um, so, you know, those people who buy those courses, I don't know who they are. They they don't they're not in touch with me, but it's spreading the word and 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 it's wonderful. Yeah. And it's passing on that abundance. Yeah, so so you're saying it fell on my lap and I think I can say that I saw the work that you put in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love the fact that you're, you know, saying that it fell on your lap, but it it was a lot of work. And this is what I want to try to deconstruct here for people that are listening, because people see the result today. So today you're a multiple six figure business owner in dollars, right? You have three people working for you in the admin side. You have 15 therapists working for you. You've treated thousands of children. And today you have hundreds, whether it's online or face to face, you have therapists, hundreds of therapists are learning from you. And yes, there is this abundance, but I want to, I want to go a little bit behind the curtain 
because this okay. is what people want to hear, right? They want to hear, okay, great, now she's there, but how did she do it? Let's reverse engineer. Let's <laughs> let's go back to how did this happen, right? And I know that you know we've been working together for many years now, and, and I've seen you grow. But I, what I want to talk about here is the mindset aspect, because this is what we're talking about, right? We're talking about am I afraid of competition? Am I looking at this, you know, like abundance, or am I looking at this scarcity, or how am I going to grow? I never saw myself, you know, at the head of a treatment, everything that you're saying, right, which is now behind you. But can you take us a little bit behind the curtain and tell us, like, how was the mindset before? And how did you overcome this? How did you shift that mindset to be what it is today? Can you tell us more about that? My tendency, and I think this is true of many people who work with anxiety disorders, is to be anxious and to be overly careful and to be scared, frankly. And I think that really characterized the beginning. And it still does. Every new step, I, you know, I have to kind of breathe deeply and absorb it and process it and then accept it and, and uh, implement it. So I think uh, mindset was belief in myself, belief in the method and, and courage and and a belief in growth. And, and, you know, when I look back and I deconstruct this, what I do see is like, when I look at my websites, I see so many resources and so much and, and so much that has happened. And, and it is step by step by step. It is one step at a time. And learning to delegate, which is still doesn't come that easily. And learning to let go. And, and spreading my wings and, and you know, doing more courses and at the same time scaling the, what what I what I have um, established. So it is step by step. It's it's a mindset of self belief and of um, at the same time self care. You know that this has to be good for me and that I do have to have a personal life <laughs> as well. Um, but it's also a mindset of courage, I would say. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny because that kind of is so aligns with the with my clients that that's you know that's what we need but but without that courage then you're just stuck in the same place right. it's always a bit scary to take um yeah. a, a step forward for that's me <laughs> Listen, I mean, as you know, everyone is uh, you know, on the same boat for that. And I know that, you know, people ask me like, you know, OK, so what's so special about the Born to Do Business program? And when I, when I speak about mindset, sometimes some people say, yes, mindset is very important, but some people don't appreciate Right, the importance of mindset. I know that you, this is something that you really liked in our work together in the Born to Do Business program that you really appreciated. But I think you can remember when you first started that you didn't think that it was as important as you know it is now. Is it true? Yeah, absolutely. Even though, you know, I have given mindfulness courses, I understand mindset, but I, that's not what I wanted for you. I wanted kind of steps yeah how do we move forward and and i'm just the machine that's doing it kind of thing and that's just not the case yeah. um so yeah. Yeah, it's I think I think people come, you know, thinking that they want, you know, the marketing and they want the systems and they want the hiring. And then when they get the mindset that, you know, of course, I, I believe, as you know, and I think now you have enough, you can look back and see how the mindset is really the engine that makes it all possible, because it, this is what elevates you. Uh, to be the person that can do the marketing, that can do the strategy, that can do the hiring. So I think that mindset was, was a big one. There is another thing also that I think happened in this growth and, and allowed you also enabled you to scale it, to leverage not only the results, but also the way that you are a CEO, the way that you see yourself as an entrepreneur and not just uh, a therapist that is delivering an amazing service, but also a CEO hiring, delegating, you spoke about delegating. I think it's the aspect of finance. This, I think, was also a big shift. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I, I was terrified of, of numbers, of money. You know, don't talk about money. It's like, it's like just it's going to come and you just have to uh, ask for as little as possible, And um, which, which I still believe in, making it accessible. But at the same time, it's win-win if I'm doing well and my client's doing well and we're you know, putting in maximum effort. And that was a mind shift that I actually feel that I've 
done it to, I mean, I'm sure there'll be another stage <laughs> where I'll have to work on it again. But just recently that, I, I mean, it's been a work in progress, but just recently that I can talk about it comfortably with clients, with um, therapists, that that is part of, of being the head of a center. It, it, otherwise, it's not a viable, it's not a sustainable model. And, and that's, that is like, that was a new level of kind of calm that, yeah, this is something I, firstly, I understand now and it's taken me many years and I can also uh, discuss it comfortably and feel, not feeling that this is some, something dirty that I shouldn't be talking about, but this is part and package of, of, you know, of, of making the treatment accessible to people. That's 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 the way it works, and I feel I feel I only had that kind of real feeling, and even a half moment only a month or two ago with you, when I, when I felt I reached the next stage of, of of feeling comfortable and swimming in this kind of the area of of finance of the financial side of the business. Uh, I want to say one other thing that as a therapist, I'm basically a therapist, but. Uh, it's very exciting to learn all these business tools and systems and making it more efficient, making it more accessible. That's just a whole other area, which is kind of layering onto the my work as a therapist and as a supervisor. And it's um, and it's growth. It's it's cognitive growth. It's opening your mind um, and making and making the, the the therapeutic work more effective and more accessible. Yes, definitely. I think there are so many therapists that I've worked with, as you know, with many therapists. And I think that there is this mindset of, you know, we're doing good in the world. So we're not we're not business people. We're not entrepreneurs. We're just helping. And I think we can, you know, do good and help and and, you know, share our, our gifts and at the same time become the CEO and at the same time understand finances and at the same time understand, you know, how to hire. I think that your whole business model is based on hiring. If you didn't have those 15 therapists working for you, you wouldn't have the center and you would be like working, I don't know, 20, like your son said, like either you add eight hours a day or you find someone uh, to do it for you, right? Mm -hmm. So I love that. I really, I really love that. I think that what you're saying is so true that as when you grow as a person, this is what's going to allow and enable the growth and scaling of the business, right? It cannot happen. <laughs> So part and package, and I think that is part of the deep satisfaction of this journey, that it's it's being successful, thank God, and and spreading the word and helping people, and it's personal growth at the same time. That's two sides of the coin, but that just yeah, I think that's what leaves me in this kind of state of wonder that this is happening to me inside and outside. Um, but I mean, again, you, you made the choice to grow and you made the choice to learn and you made the choice to, you know, be in a, in a context where you can learn and you have access to, to all this growth. So uh, I know a lot of people, when they, they hear those success stories, they're like, okay, great. I see the results, but how is the program really helping those people getting there? Right. They don't see, they see the results. It's amazing. Uh, they see me talking about it, but like, what is the recipe? So can you, can you say in your own words, like we know from your experience, how do you think the program helped you to get to where you are today? Um, it, it changed my conceptualization of what, of how to handle treatment. So that was the first thing, the conceptualization, the tracks, the different treatment options, structuring it, um, understanding, I mean, step by step that I need somebody else doing this for me. I can't do it all myself. So hiring. Um, um, feeling comfortable with the tools and the systems and the finances and the high tech um, side of it. <clears throat> and, and I think all of those together uh, enabled me to scale and to leverage and to grow. Um, you know, they, they sound kind of like just, uh, you know, titles of, of, and I guess they are, and each one is so layered and is so rich, but um, it's a lot of growth on all different areas, on, on the systems, on the, and, and also just having you there in order to come up with the next 
hitch <laughs> and the next problem and how am I going to get over this and and um, a whole pile of things waiting to discuss with you it has not finished and and it won't finish you know there will be new challenges at each uh, challenges of growth you know new areas that I want to go in and how how do I incorporate them and how do I make this a win-win-win right. um, yeah so I think that you can hear yourself and I think everyone who's listening to you can see how this has not fallen into your lap you have worked for it really hard and you have learned and you have changed i mean i've seen you change and really change your perspective and change the way you look at things and and be ready for this which is not easy right because it's not just about implementing strategies or solutions but it's also about becoming someone else and that's that's how you enable you know the success and the abundance and and then yes it flows but you mm -hmm. do have to be able to allow this so uh, I, I have to say it's fascinating to to watch you on this journey and thank you for everything you said about you know working with me and in the program I have one last question for you if you had one or maybe more than one piece of advice uh, to give to entrepreneurs who are listening to you. This is the Jewish Women Entrepreneurs Podcast. So most people are entrepreneurs and they're listening to your journey. And maybe some of them are therapists or in the same, you know, kind of industry coaches or or helping other people. And they're like, wow, you know, I wish I wish I was there. What would be the advice that you could give them? Well, I think the first thing which you would call a born to do is to have a dream, to believe in your dream. And then to find the steps, the painstaking, repetitive steps of growth in order to reach that dream. But to believe in that, in that dream, and you know, the, and the dream shifts; it goes higher and higher, and it becomes more glittery as it goes higher in the sky. But, but not to limit yourself, because we have, we all have such potential, and it's a combination of having that dream and then finding someone like you to work on those steps with and just keep moving forward. Wow, I love it. A combination of the born to do and the implementation, right? Like the, yeah, like yeah. them together. I yeah. love it. Wow. Thank you so much, Ruth. I am sure that we will interview you again for another success story interview because I'm sure we're going to watch you grow and you're going to come back in a few months with, you know, more stories about more countries and more languages and more kids that you're helping and parents that you're helping. And I think it's so fulfilling to be able, I'm grateful that I'm able to help you get to where you are because, you know, this is how we spread ripple effects of good in the world. That's that. This is how, this is what happens. So I'm really, really happy to be on this journey with you. And thank you so much for this inspiration. I hope everyone is hearing and listening and integrating the information that you're sharing because it's really really precious thank you so much thank ruth you. thank you i could not have done it without you thank you so much you're very welcome thank you so much bye everyone see you next week for another episode of the jewish women entrepreneurs podcast bye everyone bye ruth thank you so much. Bye -bye.